Okay, now to discuss the GOP agenda and the Democrats' own path forward. Senator Tammy Baldwin, Democrat of Wisconsin. Senator Chris Murphy, Murphy Democrat of Connecticut. Um, it's good to have you both here. Nice to see you in person. Good to join Usually you. we're talking over satellites. Um, it, you, you are both uh, you are both senators who are what we call in cycle, which means you will be up in 2018. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be your first reelection for, for both of you, so that's a you know that's a big deal. <laughs> I presume you guys want to stay senators. Yeah, um, planning on it. Yeah, so, well, and it's sort of interesting because, like, you know, when you think about the politics of the moment, what it cashes out to is folks like yourself and how you're going to think about how you represent your constituents in, in this environment. Are you, are Democrats going to have a dinner like that dinner that the Republicans have where you all get together and figure out how to block what's coming down the pike? Are we going to have a dinner? Like <laughs> I don't know. That? We can go out to dinner later. <laughs> I mean, I mean, frankly, we don't have to have a dinner because he's making this so easy. I mean, the country uh. very, very clearly is going to unite around the idea that you shouldn't throw out health care for 20 million Americans without a replacement. There is no public support out there for the privatization of Medicare, Medicaid, um, and and Social Security. Uh, and so, you know, this doesn't have to be a fairly complicated internal strategy. He just seems to be landing on the wrong side of public opinion on almost everything. Here's here. And I, yeah, I, I think about when I, I ran for Senate in, in 2012, uh, the people sent me here to stand up to powerful interests and fight for Wisconsin's working class, help them get ahead. They're struggling. And I think moving forward, you know, to the extent that Trump came to Wisconsin and promised working people I, I, things like getting rid of unfair trade deals and uh, buy America policies, etc. We need to hold him accountable to those words. And when he's going to do things that harm uh, the working people of my state, we resist with uh, every ounce of our energy. What does that mean? I mean, I, one of the things that that happened. I mean, so right now, th this hill, this hill article today was interesting to me because I think the ACA fight has taken front and center because they've moved yes. on that first. But of course, they're going to move that through a budget. It's funny now we're passing budgets again. We haven't done that in a while. <laughs> it's been hard to get a normal budget process, but but. Um, they're going to move that for reconciliation. It's going to mean that they could, they don't need that, that to clear that filibuster threshold of 60. What can you do? I mean, practically, like as a senator, can you slow things down? Can you, do you think you can win over three of your colleagues? Well, first of all, uh, as we did last weekend, engaging the people, finding their voice, telling their own stories. Uh, I had, uh, there were several rallies across the state of Wisconsin, but um, I attended one um, where person after person shared what this would mean to them, uh, the harm it would cause. It will cause, in some cases, death. In, in other cases, bankruptcies, like we used to see with regularity prior to the passage of these health reforms. And it will impact every American. So part of it is engaging the people on this. Um, but while but those engagement has to turn into votes at some point. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> unless Ron Johnson hears those folks, your um, your your colleague in 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 Wisconsin who just uh, uh, was reelected. Unless he hears those votes and thinks, you know what, I don't want to vote for this ACA bill. Yeah, but so there's a couple of things that I I, I suspect that Chris uh, shares my experience of Republicans in the Senate sort of quietly to us saying, uh, you know, this isn't quite working out the way we thought. And we are hearing from our constituents, and they are nervous. We need to make sure, uh, because they can repeal it with a simple majority through the reconciliation process, they can't replace it. Uh, with that just one, 51 right. votes. And, and Trump is Trump is screwing this thing up for them because he continues to say that you can't repeal it without an immediate replacement. Guess what? They cannot do that. They do not have the votes to pass a replacement. So they are creating... Oh, this is a crucial point. They're, they, they can't do the replacement through reconciliation. They can repeal through reconciliation, right. but a replacement, they're going to need... They need Democrat votes. They need Democratic votes, and, and frankly, even if they only need Republican votes, they couldn't find the votes to pass a replacement. So they are they're setting up expectations for themselves that they simply cannot meet. And then there are things that they can't do through reconciliation. Some of the privatization of Medicare, Social Security, you can't do that through reconciliation. They still need Democratic votes. So there still is the ability to resist. And even when they need 50 votes, they've set these expectations that they simply can't find a way to get to. So this is going to be hard. What do, you, what do you say to people? And I want to talk about, you know, people, people have been, uh, there's sort of this discussion that happens. People look at the approval ratings and they say these are historic. 
historically low. Um, and, uh, you know, even if these polls are off five or 10 points, they're still historically low, right? Even if you give him the benefit of the doubt, um, he's at 38, 39, 37. Barack Obama was at 65, somewhere around that. But then there are people who say, well, it didn't really matter in the election. The guy got elected anyway. The gravity doesn't matter. Um, how much does public opinion matter? How much does it matter, do you think? You know, certainly he has some pretty rough numbers going into Inauguration Day. Um, I think it's really clear from those that he has got to do a lot to earn the trust of the American people, and it is going to matter. Um, you know, I, I hear from people as I travel the state of Wisconsin who voted for Hillary, who voted for Trump, who voted for Gary Johnson. I think he has a very short time period to make it clear whether he's going to follow through on the promises he made to working people who, in the end, uh, gave him the edge in my state. Yeah. Um, I think it's a very short time period. and To deliver the, for those voters. Uh, absolutely. To, and, and the early indicators with his nominees for cabinet posts, he said he was going to drain the swamp. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. Uh, the, these are the, the powerful, the billionaires, the bankers, et cetera, that he's populating his cabinet with. Um, I think people are troubled already. And listen, the, the, he, he's made a very clear claim that only he can fix what's wrong right. in your life, right? Obama's metric was, is, is Washington different? Did I change the culture, right? So Republicans kind of controlled that right. because if they didn't work with him, then Obama a was a point. failure. Trump says, no, I am going to palpably and tangibly change your life life, people are going to be able to figure out at the end of two years whether their life is better and whether what he said is true. So if he doesn't deliver on it and nothing he's proposing is going to actually make those people's lives different, then that approval rating, which is low yeah. today, is, is much more dangerous for him two years from now. And do you think it's dangerous for, for the other people in his party? I mean, because Donald Trump has a different political calculus, but the folks that you work with in your, in your body, your colleagues, as they're thinking about what they're going to support and not, not to support, they're thinking about you know, what their voters and their constituents want. And back when this party, the Republican Party, was a trickle-down party, um, you know, th they were losing seats left and right yeah. in the House and the Senate. I think people think that this is a different Republican Party well, now. So when they figure out that it's the yeah. same old party, then yes, in the midterms, I think a lot of their uh, members are going to be in yeah. trouble. You know, it, the re Republican establishment owns Washington now. They do. The presidency and both houses of Congress. Can't blame it on you. I, <laughs> They'll try. Yes. I was going to say, yeah. and, and um, Republicans in the Senate will own this cabinet. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, there, there's there's no escaping this. Yeah, they're going to they're, they're gonna blame it. The, the press is now the new enemy, I think, is going to be what's going to happen. <laughs> Senator Tammy Baldwin, Senator Chris Murphy, great to have you here in person. Thank